Previously on Primal Tendencies. In the last episode, my friend Maddie from the Yukon came to visit me at the hut. He brought gifts of dry meat and corn and spent much of the following day making pottery and experiencing this primitive lifestyle. Today I will show him my primitive technique to fire pottery and a simple method to make a survival basket. Since it is Tuesday and we have all the ingredients needed to make tacos, I think we should declare today Taco Tuesday. Mmm. Good. The sour berry aid came out great, as always. Fresh spring water. Got some good embers in there. Oh yeah. Coals, I mean. Good coal. Get a couple. Yeah. The more you get, the easier it will be to start the fire. Come here, baby. I don't think that punk wood is really necessary, but it'll help. It's like a little insurance policy. Smoking? Yeah. Perfect. Let's go. There it is, baby. Yeah. Nice. I love that way of transferring fire. It works good. That particular material is an excellent kindling. All right, let's just get this thing burning good and, and then we'll let it die down. I think that I had read somewhere that quicklime can be made from the ashes of burnt wood, so I decided to experiment with that idea. All right, good, this is perfect. It's still smoking. Mm -hmm. And we can, uh, we can put that pottery down in there. We'll put the pottery in and then restart the fire. <laughs> so I usually put it upside down like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, just put the rest of them in like that. Perfect. 
Now this, would you want it like this or um, this? I put it on top, like okay. that. And then I have to uh, cook this too. I'm just gonna put it right in the middle of them. And now, yeah, let's stick the all that kindling into the coals and get this baby going. All right. It's gonna take a little while. catch You're smoking good a lot of times it's better to blow right through there really yeah instead of blowing down on it that way that way you're kind of blowing under it There we go. And get that blazing hot. Keep it hot for about half an hour. Keep the flames going for about half an hour. I always thought it would be longer than that. It's not bad. No, well these pieces are small. The larger pieces that I have, I, I will keep them, keep the flames going for like 45 minutes. Oh yeah, less. Got some materials for making baskets. Nice. And a couple stones to for the first step in the process. Oh, these willow. Desert willow. <coughs> mm. Nice. It's not a true willow. They call it desert willow because it has similar features, like being having very flexible branches. I used a desert willow on some of the roof, but I made my baskets. Yeah, so um, it's pretty simple. First thing I want to do is split the leaves though. And to do that, of course you could use a knife. If you don't have one, Let's smash the end. Ideally, you want them as fresh as possible. Otherwise, they they do get a little brittle. But then you want to split it like that, and you do it carefully. So, like, if you just rip it apart, it's not going to be even. Okay, so um, the first thing we're gonna do after we split, all of them will be split, uh, but for the form, we're gonna start by making the spokes. And that was, that is, um, you're gonna take like probably eight of these. You're gonna we're gonna cross them 
Mm -hmm. And we're gonna weave them together and uh, and then start weaving and just building on that. And then as we go, we bend these, keep the weave going and it'll hold shape. So you can imagine like having a spoke that's bent like this. Mm -hmm. And we have eight of them all going all the way around in a bowl shape. And you're just gonna keep weaving all that together tight. And so I'll show you the weave when we get get all this prepared. Um, first of all, how how big do you want to make it? We don't have a lot of material, so Small. we can't make a very a big one. And it takes quite a bit of time. So, so I'm thinking maybe something like like that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to leave some extra on the top because when we get to the so we weave it all the way up to here and then we bend these down and we do a final weave that will be the rim so we have to leave like a little extra like an inch okay at the top so so yeah that'll be that'd be i think we have enough for the to make that okay mm -hmm. so um just just break them at that point We'll make them all this length, so we want to cut. And what we want to use for the spokes is this, the longer one, or I'm sorry, the thicker ones. Okay. So you have a couple of thick ones here, like this. And so we're going to start by smashing that end and then splitting it. As easy as it looks as this. No, not with the thick ones. That one's pretty thick. So it's definitely a little more difficult. So yeah, we need to split all of those and uh, here I've got six thicker pieces that are all the same length. Um, I decided that six would be sufficient. We only need eight and these are going to be the spokes and what I'm going to do is, and there's different ways to do this and I don't know what might be the best way, but this is more or less a survival basket. It's something you can put together pretty quickly. Start with this form here. So I have four of the spokes together and then cross it with two more. And I'm just gonna start weaving. I'm gonna weave this all together with, uh, with one of these. Now these branches have been out for a couple days, so they're a little dry. So it might be a little difficult to work with. They may have a tendency to crack, but basically I'm taking the middle folding it in half, it still stays together, and what I'm going to do is, the first part's a little tricky. Another way, which is actually easier, but requires another type of material, is using yucca cordage, or any kind of cordage, obviously, and you could use that to just tie this together really tight. Mm -hmm. And that works really well. I like doing that. I've done that with some of the baskets. Okay, so basically once you got it started there, what I'm going to do is start separating these so they'll all be even spokes, so like the spokes of a wheel. Mm -hmm. That's what I want to make. Um, uh, if you were to apply this to heat, like next to a fire or something, you could make these 
all these branches more flexible so you could bend them. They almost become like rubber when they get very hot. Not burning, not in the flame, but just next to the heat. And then you can, they become much more pliable. And so, so what we want to do is kind of open these up a little bit. It cracked a little bit. It's okay. Just a survival basket. Um, fresh material, like I said, will work better. So yeah, I'm just going to continue bending these carefully so that they're like evenly, evenly spread. Mm -hmm. Try that. Mm -hmm. And then when you get finished with that, I'll show you the weave, the actual weave part, the rest of the weave. Hot. It's hot out there. All right. We got water for the corn. Mm. Now I'm gonna pulverize this ball of ash, and then I'll cook it in the pot with the corn. I see. Wow, it's light, isn't it? Yeah, it's super light. So All light. the water's been has, uh, evaporated out of it. I need a coat hanger in here. It's really hot today. down is super easy it's just feels like ash just like it did before all right good enough
fresh water from the spring. I should have put this cow in first. Soak it up. All right, I gotta restart the fire and cook it. that transferring fire from one place to another. It's on. Um, I'm just gonna cook it for an hour. I don't want to get it even super hot. I just wanted to get to where right about to the point of boiling and then let it sit for a little while, cool off. And I'll clean those kernels and then grind it into a dough.
Hope oh, tacos will be ready pretty soon. Yum. Stomach is growling. I've been snacking on kernels of corn all the while I was grinding them. You're going to notice that they are... The texture of the tortilla is a little different from what you're used to. That's because this corn was not nixtamalized. And that's a process of cooking the corn kernels in lime. Uh, actually something like um, calcium hydroxide. It makes the skins just pretty much just fall off uh, during the cooking process. And it will then create a nice smooth textured dough. And so the problem here is that all the corn kernels have the skin still remaining and that bulky material doesn't bind well. It's not sticky. And so the, the, the dough just doesn't stick together well. So we end up with a inferior product, but nonetheless, it's still nutritious and, and it's very primitive. All I'm wondering is what they're gonna taste like. I think you'll like them, <coughs> especially when we add a little bit of sour berry juice to it. Mm. <laughs> you think that, that, that texture's gonna affect the taste? No. No. They taste good. They look healthy. I'm gonna flip the ones that are on. All right. Taco time. It's just about taco time. I have here. Okay, let me set the table. I need a bowl for the tortillas. Do you have one there? Yep. It will make a very simple table here with uh, there's a table. Mm -hmm. Tortilla bowl. Okay, let's get the tortillas out. Hey, they're a little crispy, but... Oh, nice. They held together good. We need the meat. All right, so... Yeah, they held together. This sourberry juice, I guess you call it, just with some water, that'll give it... That'll be like squeezing lime on your taco. Uh, smells good, man. We need the meat. The most important part. You're going to want to sprinkle that on there because the meat is dry. All right, there's one, there's another. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a primitive taco right there. <laughs> Got one more thing. Got some bean sprouts. Nice. So, oh, these are beautiful. Wow. These are beautiful. So. You can put some bean sprouts on there as your vegetable. One healthy looking taco. It actually is. It's the healthiest looking taco I've ever seen. These bean sprouts are really, really delicious. Palo Verde bean sprouts from the desert. A bit of sour berry juice on there. It's just like sprinkling the lime. All right. Fold that baby up. Just fold it a little bit. And we'll 
welcome to Taco Tuesday. Thank you, sir. It's dry now. Mm. Mm. The meat's a little dry, but mm. good. I gotta admit, it tastes good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look on your face. Oh man. Mm. So yeah, <laughs> it's primitive for all right. <laughs> it hits the spot. Mm. That's the primitive as it gets right there. <laughs> That's my taco shell. <laughs> This is definitely 10,000 BC. This is 10,000 BC for sure. I never had tacos back then anyway. <laughs> I, I guess the reason why the meat so stiff has been hanging up in the sun for four days. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. I guess I need a little more sour berry juice on it. Got a nice lime flavor. It's tasty, right? It is. It is. And with the sprouts, and a little vegetable in there. Mm -hmm. Very nourishing. Taco Tuesday. We have to do this every week. Taco Tuesday, man. <laughs> <laughs> the quick lime experiment didn't work, but the tacos were good enough to satisfy our hungry bellies. With more practice and experimentation in the field of primitive gastronomy, I will soon be eating like a primal king. <laughs>